Hi, I'm Annie of ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie. Thank you so much for joining us for week number 11 of season two of Live with Annie. We really love spending this time with you and thank you for making the time to be with us. Last week, we announced the winners in our fifth annual local quilt shop contest. It was so much fun to see the diversity of shops represented and to read all your wonderful comments. Thank you so much for your support of local quilt shops around the world. If you missed it or want to watch it again, remember that all of the episodes of Live with Annie are available online. You can watch them on our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, or by going to byannie.com live. We will put up all the links to make them easy for you to find. We are often asked, where do you get all those beautiful fabrics and how do you decide what to put together? So as the next topic in our Buy Annie bag making series, we are going to discuss how we choose and coordinate fabrics and supplies for projects. Today we'll share tips for picking fabrics, soft and stable, and thread, and we'll continue next week with tips for choosing zippers, mesh, fold-over elastic, strapping, and hardware to complement and enhance your project. We're going to start by looking at three get-out-of-town bags. And as you can see, each of these bags is made using the very same pattern, but by varying fabrics, we got three really different results. And I love seeing how different fabrics can really change the look of a bag. So this fabric by Tim Holtz, turn it around so you can see the front, it's a little more interesting from the front, uh, makes a really classy understated bag. This would be a perfect travel bag for a guy. On this one, we used a monochromatic series of colors to create a really calm, serene bag. This would be a bag that anyone could carry for any time. It'd be just a great everyday bag. For this bag, we really livened things up with a big variety of brilliant fabrics from Cave Facet. This bag would be perfect to carry everything for a trip to a tropical island or to brighten a dark winter day. So one pattern, three very different looks. Get these back off my table. There we go. So as you well know, fabric choices are very personal and they really reflect the personality of the maker. And that's one of my very favorite parts of our monthly photo contest because we get to see all the different fabrics that people use for their projects. Rarely are any even close to the same. For me, the first considerations when I look at fabrics for a project are first, how is the bag going to be used? And second, who is the intended recipient? Because I'm going to choose completely different fabrics if I'm making a bag for a teenager than if I'm making one for a man or my grandmother. And a bag made for a trip to Hawaii is probably going to look quite different than a bag made to take to a business meeting. If you've been joining us regularly, you'll remember that we talked about sewing for guys in weeks 28 and 29 of season one of Live with Annie, and we showcased projects made with more manly fabrics then. So be sure to check those out if you're looking for inspiration for more masculine projects. To find them easily, just go to byannie.com live and then scroll down to the past episodes section and use the drop down menu to go to weeks 28 and 29. And that's there, you'll find them really easily there. There's another way you can do that too. And that is to scroll way down to the bottom of that screen and do the, go to the find an episode section and search for the episode there. And I wanted to point out that this area has changed recently. We've replaced the section that let you filter by topic, and we now have a Live with Annie showcase that allows you to see and search the various episodes. So to do that, just click on the Live with Annie showcase button, and then all of the past episodes are going to come up. You may need to click on the Load More button a few times in order to see them all. Once you're in there, you're going to see a search button at the top right. 
And if you click on that and say type guys in the field, the two episodes of sewing for guys are going to pop up. If, for instance, you wanted to see options for baby projects, you could type baby in the search field and see that we presented three episodes that showcased projects for babies. Just know that you may need to experiment a little with search terms um, and be careful with how you spell them. For instance, if you typed babies in there, nothing's going to come up. So you might have to um, think about it and change the, the um, the word a little to, to make sure you find what you're looking for. So have fun exploring those episodes and let us know if you have any questions as you do. I'm going to have a quick drink of water and then we're going to get started. But before we start talking about fabrics for your projects, I have one really important tip to share. Every single project that I show you today shares one really important attribute. From this little tiny contain yourself to a great big travel duffel bag, each project that we've made is stabilized using Biani's Soft and Stable. Soft and Stable is a product that I developed over 10 years ago to give body and stability to purses, bags, and other projects. It really makes all the difference in creating a bag that looks like something you bought rather than something you made, and it's the key to creating beautiful bags with a professional finish. So I'm going to untie this so we can take a little look at it. Soft and Stable is a firm but resilient foam, and it has a really softly napped fabric lining on each side. And that lining really hugs any fabric that you put in on it and helps it stay in place. This fabric lining is attached by a a flame lamination process so there aren't any glues or adhesives on it that are going to gum up your needle and this really high quality foam ensures that your project is going to stand up and holds its shape it really is the very best foam stabilizer on the market when you buy soft and stable it is 58 to 60 inches wide so a one yard package is going to measure 36 inches high by 58 inches to 60 inches wide, and that's really enough to make most any by any project until you get into the larger travel bags. It really goes a long way. And here's a really important tip. Keep that 58 to 60 inch width in mind when you compare prices between Soft and Stable and some of the other foam stabilizers on the market. Because if the foam stabilizer you are considering is only 20 inches wide, you're going to have to buy three yards of it to equal what's in a one yard package of Soft and Stable. This morning I compared the current rates at the best known American chain store to Biani's rates and even if I was using one of their 40% off coupons to buy the equivalent of a one yard package of Soft and Stable, I'd be paying a dollar more and getting a lower quality foam product that I would have to figure out how to join to make a piece big enough for my project. So keep that in mind. Another real advantage of Soft and Stable is that it comes in black or in white. And we really like to use black when we're working with dark fabrics as we feel like it really enhances the colors. So if you look at this piece of fabric, you're not going to see probably a huge difference on your screen, but I can show you these two pieces. Here is a piece of white soft and stable, a piece of black. I used the same piece of batik fabric. And if you see here, the white really brightens the, the colors. The black brings out the darker undertones in it. So again, the black is going to enhance darker colors. If you're using w lighter fabrics, we really like the white because as you can see, it really brightens the colors and makes them shine where the black kind of grays them down. If you only want to purchase one color of Soft and Stable, I always recommend that you buy white because it will work under either one. And, and white is certainly the one that we use by far the most time. So let's move that out of our way and talk about fabrics. So using Soft and Stable enables us to use just about any fabric for a purse or bag. Even lightweight fabrics that wouldn't normally seem to be sturdy enough for a purse or bag will work when they're stabilized with Soft and Stable. So our first fabric choice is always a high quality quilting cotton because of the wide range of colors and designs that are available. 
So I'm going to demonstrate today how we pick fabrics, and I'm going to be using a couple of uh, new lines by one of my very favorite designers, Carrie Bloomston, who designs for Wyndham Fabrics. Carrie always has such fun, colorful fabrics, and we really love her style. I'm also really excited to say that I confirmed yesterday that Carrie is going to be our guest on Live with Annie in July. So if there's any questions you'd like us to ask Carrie, be sure to post them in the comments. And we'll share a lot more details about that soon. But fabric designers really do a fabulous job of coordinating a variety of fabrics of different scales, values, and designs when they design a line. And that makes choosing fabrics for a project really easy because most of the work is already done for you. So today we're going to work with Carrie's new lines, Happy, which are these fabrics, and Color Wash, which maybe I can pull over here. I don't need it all the way over, but a little bit so it's in the screen. So this is Color Wash. So Happy has lots of colorful and happy prints that are great for a variety of projects. And then her Color Wash has more solid blender type fabrics. So it's going to be really easy to pick a beautiful coordinated set just by staying within these lines. And even if you don't buy all the fabrics in a line as we have here, you can use similar t methods to what I'm going to show when you visit your local quilt shop as they will often display all the fabrics from a particular line together. All right, so when we receive a shipment of fabric from a fabric company, our first step is to sort it. And in this case, that means putting all the pieces of the same design together. So we've put, this particular design is called mixtape, and it comes in a light and a dark. We put those together. There's three different rainbow prints. We put those together. There's three different lightning prints. We put those together so we can look at them. Then there's one called Artist that's lots of little scribbly designs. We put those together. Some clouds, some um, window pane, I think is what this one is called, and then some dots. So we sort those all into um, just all the colors of each design together. The majority of our projects call for three different fabrics. A main fabric that we use for the outside of the project, a lining fabric for the inside, and a coordinating fabric that we use for handles, straps, bindings, and borders. Occasionally, a pattern will call for a fourth fabric, which we usually call a contrasting fabric, and we might use that for borders, interior pockets, stabilizer sleeves, things like that. So our next step after we get these sorted like this is to separate them into three categories. So we'll pick ones for main, lining, and coordinating. And then if the fab pattern does call for a fourth fabric, we can choose it from one of those groups. And note that these are just general categories. Fabrics may move from one category to the other as we sort further. So we like to use large scale colorful prints for our main fabrics. So either of these um, mixtape ones, any of these um, rainbows would be great. We could even use these lightning bolts as that. All of these have an interesting variety of color and they're fairly large scale prints. So it's going to be easy to find coordinates to go with them. We like to use lighter valued fabrics and more medium scale fabrics for our linings. So here are some options for linings. These aren't all lighter value, but they're definitely a smaller scale. So we've got the scribbles. These clouds was, would also be great for lining fabrics. And then for our coordinate, we like to um, choose fabrics that read more as a solid because those pieces are generally used for handles, straps, bindings, and borders. All of those pieces are fairly narrow. So any of these window pane fabrics would work great as a coordinate. Um, these dots would work good. And any of the fabrics in the, um, in the color wash line would also be great as coordinating fabrics. These dots are actually one that could go in any of the categories. I could see that as a main fabric. I could see that as a lining fabric or as a coordinate. So that's a really versatile fabric there. And again, as I said, none of these categories are cast in stone. They just kind of help us start narrowing down the choices. Once we have kind of our main lining and coordinating fabrics generally separated, 
then we're ready to start picking some fabrics for some projects. And we think that this line of fabric would be perfect for projects for kids. And we thought, well, let's make a set of room with a view zippered bins. So these, this is our room with a view um, pattern. And so we're going to walk through the process that we would use to choose fabrics for that project. So we usually start by picking the main fabric because that's the one that's going to be most visible. I am going to set these up over here and pull these down so we can take a look at them. And everything else is based on that fabric, so that's kind of the one you want to pick first. And we try to pick something that is really interesting and has a variety of colors. Also, if we're making a set of bags like Room with a View, we'll try to pick all the main fabrics first. So that pattern includes instructions for three sizes. You can see the small one here, uh, the medium and the large are on the shelf behind me. And so normally we will pick a medium to a dark value print for the main fabric, but not always. Um, excuse me just a second, I need another drink. So to give each one its own personality, we might pick a dark value for the big one, a medium value for the um, lighter or for the medium one, and then a lighter value for the other. So here are some um, thoughts that I had. And this one we think would be great for a large. Um, this one might be nice for the medium. This one for the large, to me, that's, that's too many different variations in there. So I'd probably stick this one in. So here's my large, here's my medium, here's my small. And that gives us three different versions. You could even stick this one in here instead. So any of those would be great and give you a lot of variety. We figure that these are often going to be displayed on a shelf together. So having something in between to kind of break up the really busy designs also really helps. Um, we also usually consider the scale of the fabric. So another idea would be to use this one, which is a larger scale for the large, uh, more medium one for the small. Glow, you gotta go back a little bit because I can't remember what's, what I was thinking about doing. Okay, so I was thinking about this one and then picking one of these, which is a smaller print for, for the small. So that could also make a really fun, um, fun selection. So we've got large scale, medium scale, small, small scale. All right, as you can see, there's lots and lots of options, especially when you're trying to make a set that coordinates. And we usually make, we try all kinds of combinations before we make a final decision. Once we have made a tentative decision for the main fabric, then we're going to choose our lining fabric. And I'm going to go back to this example. And we'll look at these. So on bags and bins, usually for our lining, we try to pick something that's lighter in value because it makes it easy to see what's inside the project. And that's not always the case, though, and we'll talk about that more in a little bit. Um, also, the scale on the lining can be smaller, so often we'll pick a medium or even a small scale print for the lining. Um, so we're going to go back to this original fabrics, and then I'm going to look at linings for each of these. So as I look at these, I'll start pulling out something that brings out the colors in the main fabric. And on some projects, because the lining is only visible when the bag is open, you've got a lot more room for variety. But for this project, because the lining shows through the front window, I really want to make sure that I choose something that coordinates well for all three of these. So when I look at this particular fabric, the color that stands out to me the most is the yellow. And so I kind of decided I think this yellow scribble would be a really good choice for the lining on this one. And what we normally do is we take our main fabric, we open it up, we lay our lining fabric inside so that we see a bit of it, uh, but we're still focused on the main. But you can see how the lining coordinates and also how it looks with the others again. Then, um, because this is kind of a medium print, I think I'm going to pick something that has a little bit of a larger scale for this large one. And I think, let's see what my notes were. 
turquoise line, lightning. I'm not seeing the turquoise lightning. That's what I have here. Did I pick the wrong one here? Oh, turquoise. So I figured this all out the other night and had it all laying on my desk and in my room so that it, it wasn't totally new. But this, this is the one that I ended up deciding. So I think this one could work in there. That one could be really fun. Um, I think there was this one could go inside, but since I'm using it for a large, I'm not going to pull it in here. Uh, but then I um, laid this one out on there, and I actually think that one looks really nice inside there. All right, then on the small, we've got several choices. And I looked at this one. I looked at this one. All right, I've totally messed up my outside one because this one was the one I planned to have over here. That's all right. As you can see, there's lots of options. And I'm sure before we get these made, we'll have something totally different picked out too. But on this one, I actually really liked the pink. So I played with this one inside there, but it, to me it looked kind of washed out compared to the others. I played with this one inside. I ruled it out because I usually don't like to do the same lining unless it's gonna be the same on everything. I don't like to use the same print twice in a row. Um, same problem here. Um, that's not really the same lining, but that I know what I picked ended up having a lot of yellow in it. Let's just take, this is the one that's messing me up. I didn't do those glow. Just go back to the first one and let me see what fabric I had picked for the big one. Gray mix tape, turquoise rainbows. That's what I'm doing wrong here. This was the fabric we picked for the middle one. And then white mix tape. So no wonder. This is what happens when Glow and I start uh, start um, pulling them. Is because we don't want to repeat the same fabric next to each other, we end up going back and forth. So there we go. So we've got our turquoise rainbows in the middle here. And that gives us three really nice busy fabrics for the outside. And then we're going to throw this one in here as our lining. All right. That gives us a nice amount of turquoise, a nice amount of yellow, a little bit of everything. So, all right, now that we've got that figured out, we're ready to move on to our coordinating fabric. And again, I'm gonna have a quick drink. I'll wash my head, okay. Pull it in a couple inches. Okay. All right, so if you look at this little room with a view, you can see that there isn't a ton of coordinating showing. So there's a little bit on the binding here and here, the handles here, and the handles on the side. So again, because those pieces are fairly narrow, we like to pick a fabric that reads as a solid. And that fabric also helps tie everything together. So we usually try to find something that coordinates with both the main and the lining fabric, but that adds a little bit of contrast. So here are some options that I considered. This one, I tried these two here, and I also tried this one. So when we start auditioning colors for a um, coordinate fabric, we usually take it and fold it down so it's long and narrow because most of our pieces are going to be short and we like to see it you know, in just those little bits to make sure that it's going to work as a narrow piece. And then we also can lay it over everything so that we see how it goes with everything. And I really think this one is great with the outside fabrics, but I don't love it as much with the lining fabrics. So I'm probably going to set that one aside. I thought, well, let's try something totally different here. The lavender looks great on this one. So if I was doing individual ones, I might say, yeah, I'll, I'll do all this same print, but pick different colors. That would be great there. I don't love it as much with either one of these. So I'm gonna set that one aside. And when I look more closely at these, I see that almost every one of these has some yellow in it. So that was my, and some turquoise. So that was my next choice was to go to this um, 
window pane that has yellow and turquoise and lay that on there. Again, to me it looks just a little bit washed out, um, but it's better, I think, than the others. So then my last choice, and the one that I ended up picking, was this brighter yellow color wash. So if I lay that on there, I think it brings out the yellow in both of those, brings those out, looks nice on there as well too. So that's going to be my choice for this. So that's just a brief overview of what we go through in the process of trying to choose fabrics. And um, keep in mind too that none of these, especially the small one, uses nowhere near the two yard pieces we have. So we also keep that in mind and we'll pull these out as we go and use them for other projects as well. And that brings up another question that I'm often asked, which is how much fabric should I buy? As I've said, we are really fortunate to get to work with a number of really awesome fabric companies. They send us fabrics, we make models using our patterns, we use the models to promote our patterns, they can use them to promote their fabric lines, so it's really a win-win for both of us. But since we don't always have a firm plan of how we're going to use the fabrics that we're requesting, we normally just ask for two yards of each fabric in a line, which allows us to mix and match the fabrics to make a variety of items. And then when our shipment comes in, we go through our list of projects, we sort through the fabrics, we make our sets of main lining and coordinate, just as I demonstrated. Um, here today. With two yards of each fabric, we're usually able to make more than one project from a set, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. If the fabrics we've chosen for, are for a, a project that requires the fabric to be quilted, we're going to put these two fabrics, our main and lining, in a bag together, and we're going to send them off to our long arm quilter so that she can work her magic because we make hundreds of models every year, so having a supply of fabrics that are already quilted and ready to go is really a big time saver for us. And our long armor, Linda, does such a fabulous job of picking designs to enhance the fabrics that we really appreciate everything that she does. I wanted to share a few tips for that. If you have a mid-arm or a long arm or a favorite long arm quilter, um, here's some things to keep in mind. First, because getting the fabric set up on the machine is quite time consuming, most long arm quilters have a minimum charge. And we've discovered that it costs about the same to have a two yard piece of fabric quilted as it does to have a one yard piece quilted because of that minimum charge. So in my mind, I save half just by quilting a larger piece. But also having a two yard piece gives you a lot more options because so far we only have one pattern, which is the large version of Tools of the Trade that requires more than two yards of quilted fabric. And you can easily work around that in that pattern by just cutting the inner padded, padded sleeve out of a different set of quilted fabric. So with a two yard piece of quilted fabric, we basically have the option of making any by any pattern. Even our large ruler wrap, which is hanging behind me here, uses a two yard piece of quilted fabric. Also having that extra fabric by quilting the whole two yard piece, it enables us to make better use of the fabric and to make coordinating pieces. So I wanted to show you a couple of uh, bags that we did that way. I'm gonna clean some of these fabrics off this table so we have room to work. Be sure if you have any questions about choosing fabrics to put them in the notes and we'll answer some questions um, here at the end today. So this is a, um, a set of bags that we made using a two yard piece of quilted fabric. So this is our travel duffel and this pattern calls for a yard and a half of main and lining fabric to be quilted together. We also made a travel essentials which is our hanging cosmetics bag, if I can get it open. Boy, that's hard to do when you're up, when your arms are up in the air. All right, so this has a hanging cosmetics bag and we were able to get the flat iron sleeve that goes with that pattern out of it. So if I were quilting all these as individual pieces on a domestic machine, the pattern would direct me to buy three yards, a yard and a half for this project, a yard and a half of this project to get all of these out. But by quilting that two yard piece together, then I was able to get all three of these and 
I still have this big piece of quilted fabric left over that I can use for another project. So it's a fairly large piece. And this is even after I fussy cut to make sure that I had the flamingos centered on my pockets and on the centers of my bag and all of those places. So um, having that two yard piece really helps save. We did, um, we have lots of projects for smaller things that don't use tons of fabric. Um, so be sure and check those out. And we talked about using leftover fabrics in season one during weeks 15 and 16. So you might want to revisit those episodes if you're looking for ideas for using leftover quilted fabrics. We also did one of those is on quilt fabrics that aren't quilted. Here's another tip about that. If you, like me, want to use every single inch of fabric, I would suggest that if you are going to try to make several things out of this, you get out a pe piece of paper and a pencil and you sketch out the pieces and play with moving them around um, until you get them to fit on the piece that you have. You can also use a um, computer program to do that. Go ahead and go down, Glow. Um, that makes it even easier. So I do this in Adobe Illustrator, but a, little, a simple paint program would work too. And what I do is I just begin by um, drawing boxes for all of the pieces, and I draw them at a one-tenth scale. So for instance, if a piece measures 12 inches, I size it at 1.2 inches. That makes it easy to keep it on the screen and all fit. And as I do those, I add labels to the pieces so I know which pieces they are. You could also, if you're doing several projects, you could color code the pieces. And once I have all the pieces made, I kind of move those over on the side of my work table. Then I draw a two yard piece of fabric that's um, 42 inches wide, 72 inches long. And then I just start moving the shapes in to determine the best way to lay out all of those pieces. Because if you do a little bit of pre-planning, you're going to really be able to take full advantage of that piece of quilted fabric and not, you know, cut the piece here and all of a sudden realize, oh my gosh, if I had moved that down here, I would have been able to use it all. So do a little bit of thinking about that before you start and uh, you'll make full advantage of your fabric. All right, let me get those out of the way. And also don't forget that if you don't have enough fabric to make an entire project with what you have left over, you can bring in some coordinating fabrics for some of the pieces too. So that's what we did on this little in control caddy. So we had leftover fabric of this gray that we used for this open wide, um, but we didn't have enough to do the whole thing. So we used some leftover of the sewing machine fabric for the pockets. And that um, really makes a fun, cute combination and took advantage of a lot of scraps. Here is another tip um, for using your fabrics. Um, if we're making a project that has more than one side, like these open wide bags, we'll often use the lining side of the fabric for one or more, or more of the bags. So on this particular one, we took this um, yellow and pink we put this fabric on the lining. So this one is made with the yellow and pink out, the white on the inside. This one is just the opposite. So it's got the yellow and pink on the inside. So that gives you a really nice coordinated look, but we only had to quilt one set. And then, to t and then we used a totally different combination on the big one. To help tie all of this together, we used the same lime green fabric as a coordinate for, for all three of them. Okay, here's another idea. Occasionally we'll quilt two main fabrics together, and that's what we did on this set of backpacks. So um, on this one, we uh, used kind of a turquoise and gold as the main, and we've got the blue and gold on the lining, and then we just flipped those around and used the blue and gold as the main on the Got Your Back, and the turquoise and gold on the lining. So that enabled us to quilt just one piece of fabric, but to get two coordinating but very different bags out of it. So lots of tips and tricks there for choosing fabrics and combining fabrics and making best use of fabrics when you're quilting them. So for those of you who are just joining us, we're talking about choosing fabrics and supplies for your projects. We've talked about choosing soft and stable, 
mainlining and coordinating fabrics. We gave some tips for quilting them. I bet there's a lot of you who have long arm or mid arm machines, so I hope these tips have given you some ideas. And we would really love to hear your thoughts, uh, so post a comment and let us know how you quilt your fabrics. Do you quilt on a domestic machine? Do you quilt on a mid arm or a long arm? Do you quilt all your pieces individually, or you, do you do them in sets like we usually recommend in the pattern? We'd love to hear your thoughts. All right, next let's talk about threads, because threads are a really crucial part of any sewing project, and there is a lot to consider, both in terms of type of thread and in terms of colors. So as I said earlier, we normally send our fabrics to our long arm quilter, Linda, to be quilted on a long arm. And she does a really fabulous job of picking designs and threads, and she shared some tips for choosing colors with us. So the first thing that Linda said is that she doesn't want the quilting or the thread to take away from the design of the fabric. So she generally looks at the fabrics and she chooses a thread that matches the dominant color in the design. So if you look on here, she's picked a gold yellow thread. On here, she picked a gray thread. She said she prefers to use a thread that is light rather than dark because a dark thread could look like scribbles on a piece of fabric. So for instance, on this one, there is a lot of pink in here and turquoise as well. Had she picked either one of those, those would really show up anytime it went through the yellow where the yellow on here tends to blend with all of it. Go back just a little bit, Glow. So she also matches the thread to the fabrics on top. She also matches them on bottom. So she might use something completely different on the bottom than she uses on the top. So here she used yellow on top, but on the bottom she did a white so that it would blend in down there. And that can sometimes get complicated when one is really dark and one is really light. So she has to be really careful to get her tension right so that she doesn't have pokies showing through. And Linda said that she uses lots of threads from Superior Thread. Mainly she uses lighter weight threads like SoFine 50 and Omni. Um, she said she also really likes Glide. So if you're a long armor and looking for thread ideas, those are some, um, some suggestions. When we do the actual um, construction and assembly of the bag, we like to use SoFine number 50. So SoFine number 50 is a really smooth, 50 weight, three filament polyester thread. It's made by Superior Threads. And the, what, what we really love about it is it's lint free, so you don't have to worry a bunch, about a bunch of lint building up in your machine from your thread anyway. You might get it from your fabric, but not from your thread. It has a matte finish and it comes in 134 colors. It also has a little bit of a stretch, which makes it really strong and sturdy, and we just feel like it's perfect for bag making. So it comes either on a 550 yard spool, which is a lot of thread. It's plenty for any by any project. I see people who say they went through three spools of thread on their project. They're obviously not using so fine thread. Um, a lot of thread that you buy, you know, at cheaper threads maybe only have 100 yards, so you're going to go through a lot more spools. This, when you consider the price, is such a great deal because you're getting so much thread on a spool. It also comes in a cone that has 3,280 yards. So um, if you use a lot of one color, we really recommend the cones as they're a lot more cost effective. <coughs> Getting a cough today. And again, I said we use SoFine 50 almost exclusively, but I know that there are lots of people, including Leslie, who helps answer questions here, and who's our pattern tech editor, who get really great results using Aurifil cotton thread. And the Aurifil comes in a 40 weight as well as a 50 weight cotton thread, so that's another really great option. And when you're looking at threads, remember that the higher the number, the finer the thread. So assuming that they have the same number of plies, a 50 weight thread is going to be finer than a 40 weight thread. And I know Leslie usually uses a 40 weight thread when she's making bags, but what she pointed out is that SoFine 50 is a three ply 50 weight thread, but Aurifil 40 is only a two ply thread. So because it has less thries, th um, plies in it, it's really not that much difference between the Aurifil 40 and the SoFine 50. Um, 
As we said, we like using Sofine for several reasons. It's strong and sturdy, but it's fine enough that we can stitch multiple times in the same place without the thread really building up and being really noticeable. So if, for instance, you look at this little get out of town bag, when we make the handles for this bag, we begin by making a tube, putting in our strapping, and then we top stitch all the way around the handle. So we stitch along the edges once. Then when the handles are attached to the bag, we stitch again on those lines to sew it to the bag. And there's a pocket on the inside of the bag, and when we create divisions on it, we again stitch along these inter inner lines, and we go up and down, so we're stitching on it twice. Um, and that's how we get the divisions made on the pocket on the inside. So by using a really fine thread like Sew Fine 50 or a similar weight thread, this, all those lines of stitching here is going to be a lot less noticeable than if we used a heavier weight thread. The other thing about choosing colors, we generally try to match the thread to the fabric, but we also match to the zippers, the mesh, the fold over elastic as much as possible. So that might mean a number of thread and bobbin changes as you work through a project. So generally, the majority of stitching on a project is done on the coordinating fabric. If we're lucky, that thread might blend with the main and lining fabrics too, and we can use one thread for the whole project. But sometimes our choices that we make require several different threads. So for instance, on this bag, we used this orange fabric to quilt. And so any time that we were sewing that was going to show on the main fabric, such as when we stitched the zipper down, we um, put the orange thread on the parts that would be on the main fabric. When we showed, sewed the zipper in, we didn't want orange threads so showing here. So we switched to this navy thread for in the needle when we stitched along the edge of the zipper. Then the inside of the bag has a mesh pocket that has um, turquoise fold over elastic on it. It also has a slip pocket on this side that has, um, has a um, top stitching on it. So for those, we switched to a turquoise thread. And then any time that we were sewing on the coordinating fabric, we used this red thread. So that's four, one, two, three, four, five different colors of thread. Oh, actually, this one was on the list, but I'm not sure where Marianne used this one. So she may have used it somewhere in here that I can't see. So, um, but at least four different colors of thread. Here is another um, tip when you're picking thread colors. Keep in mind that thread wound on a spool or a cone looks a lot darker than just a single line of thread is going to look. So this red thread may look like it's too dark for this coordinating fabric, but when you unwind it and put just one strand on there, you're going to see that it matches really well. So I usually will unwind the thread, lay it on my fabrics, and audition the colors before I make a final decision. Here's another really helpful thread about thread or tip about thread colors. With the expert help of Leslie, we prepared a color chart that matches the colors of both Sofine and Aurafil thread to all 48 of our zipper colors. And I really want to say a special thank you to Leslie for helping with that. So the colors that we picked are also perfect for the mesh and fold over elastic that go with the zippers. And you're going to find all of that information along with a printable PDF chart at our website. And to find it, just click on the Frequently Asked Questions link that's down under the Customer Service heading on the bottom menu bar. And then once you get there, scroll down to the line that says Needles, Threads, Stitch Length, and Seam Allowances. You can click on that. Are you keeping up with me, Jake? OK, you're way ahead of me, it looks like. Then you click on the first line, and that says which colors of thread match your projects. And once you get there, you're going to see the list. You're also going to see a link to the PDF that you can print. And note that that list is sorted by the SKU for the zipper colors. And also the 14 most popular colors of zippers, which have match matching colors of mesh and fold over elastic, are marked with a little star. So you'll be able to find those. So I hope all of that information that we shared will be really helpful to you as you pick the fabrics soft and stable and thread for your projects. Next week, we're going to continue on with tips for choosing the rest of the supplies. So we'll talk about choosing zippers, mesh, fold over elastic, strapping, and hardware.
But one thing to remember, the projects and the fabrics that we picked today were made using our choices. You may want something completely different. There are so many options and there really are no right or wrong choices. So pick colors that make you happy and have fun sewing. And as always, please be sure to check with your favorite local quilt shop to get the patterns and supplies for your projects. If they don't have them, remind them that they can order all by any products directly from us or from their favorite distributor. Um, we really love it if we can all do our part to keep our local quilt shops strong and successful. And on that note, uh, we were really happy last week to feature the seven winners in this year's local quilt shop contest. They were really a diverse group of shops and it was fun to see them all. If you missed our announcements last week, be sure to check them out. So that would be week 10 of season two. Also check out our blog posts because we're highlighting all the various stores. We're also really excited to share a new feature that's on our lqscontest.com website. And whether a shop received one vote or 2,000 votes, they're all winners to us, and we really want to help highlight them. So Casey has worked to create an interactive map that shows all of the stores who received votes in this year's contest. And each shop is represented by a blue dot right now. Uh, when you click on it, you're going to see the shop name and location, its website, and the comments that were made by its customers. And stores that were our winners are marked with red stars. And in the upcoming uh, Live with Annie's, we're going to be featuring shops each time. And so we're going to add little designations for the shops that we um, feature then as well. So there is a little, in the bottom left corner, a little plus and minus button that you can use um, to make it easier to see shops in a particular area. And you might find this is a really helpful tool if you're planning a road trip or if you're looking for shops in your area. One important thing to know, though, is that locations change. Uh, in fact, I just learned that So Yeah, who is one of our grand prize uh, winners this year, is going to be moving to a new location soon. So um, be sure to call or email the store before you travel there to ensure that the information we've got posted is accurate. And though we'd love to say that every one of those shops carries by any patterns and products, we certainly can't guarantee that. So if you'd like to purchase by any supplies from a local quilt shop in your area or somewhere where you're traveling, which is what we always recommend, again, call them first to confirm. And of course, if they don't have by any products, please send them our way. All right, Brooke has posted some questions. Let me grab another drink of water and then I will answer those. All right. Besides your website, where can I buy Soft and Stable? Local quilt shop? Absolutely. Um, any local quilt shop can get Soft and Stable and um, either from us or from their favorite distributor. And so be sure to check, it, check with them. We do not sell Soft and Stable to any of the chain stores or those places. So please check at your local quilt shop. If you can't find it there, of course, you can always find it with us. All right, next question was, is room with a view suitable for someone who has only made a few bags, so a beginner with a little bit of experience? I definitely think so. So room with a view is designed um, that you quilt, I think two sets of fabric, one from which you cut the lids, and then one where you quilt only the outside fabric to a piece of soft and stable. And then you sew the vinyl on, you make a loop, you attach your zippers and your lid and you bind it. It's definitely not something hard. So um, I always say a confident beginner could easily make the vast majority of our bags. So yes, I definitely think you could. There's an add-on video that goes with this that walks you through any of the things that we thought might be more challenging or more unique. So yeah, definitely go for that. One thing that I would always recommend if you are making um, any of our patterns where there is more than one size, I always recommend starting with at least the medium. The small is always a little bit more tight quarters, so not as easy to do. Sometimes the large is a lot bigger. So in this case, I definitely probably would start with the medium and then maybe make the large and then the small. All right, can you tell us about the paint drippy color sample fabric used in some of the bags behind you? Yes, those are also fabrics by um, Carrie Bloomston, one of my favorite designers. She designs for Wyndham Fabrics 
and that particular line is called um, color theory. So that bag is made using that, those, and this one as well. So she has just amazing designs and is an amazing person. I can't wait to have her be our guest in July. She not only designs fabric, but she teaches fifth grade art. And um, if you follow her on Instagram, she does absolutely amazing projects with her kids. I wish I was a fifth grader um, in her town because I would want her to be my teacher. Um, could you tell us the name of each of the fabrics on the table? Okay, so this fabric is called um, Game theory, game theory, playtime, playtime, and it's by Katie Pasquini Massapost, and it is um, for free spirit fabrics. This fabric is called Madison One, and it's by William Rue R E U E, also for free spirit fabrics. And all of these are made using um, homemade H O M E M A D E by Tula Pink, also for free spirit. This. Um, is that Wonder, which also is that set back there, is by Carrie Bloomston, also for Wyndham. Let's see, asking about the fabric. Oh, the fabrics we were mixing and matching. Those are all from Carrie's um, upcoming line called Happy, H A P P Y. And I don't know, I know she's been announcing these, so I'm guessing they may not have hit stores yet, um, but there's I assume you don't want the names of the individual pieces. This one is called Silver Lining. This one's called, we may as well take a minute and go through it in case you want to get one. The Lightnings are called Kapow, which is cute. I'm pretty sure this one's called Artist. I call it Scribbles. Artist. And then Mixtape was the, the one that had all the different things. And then the one with the rainbows, I think, was called rainbows. So lots of those. All right. Uh, how do I get over a fear of patterned fabrics for linings? I tend to go for solids with just texture. You know, there's nothing wrong with solids with just texture. But um, I wouldn't be afraid at all of patterned fabrics. To me, they add a whole lot of interest. And one thing that I discovered just in the past couple days Patterned fabrics hide a lot of um, mistakes. Um, we're working on a, a pattern for a new bag, and we are doing some mapping models. Mapping models are ones that we make out of completely solid fabrics so that um, fabric companies can map their fabrics onto them. We don't have to make as many models. Um, a lot of them you can't even tell that no one sewed it. It looks like it was sewn. But what I discovered is that any kind of little wrinkles or inconsistencies in my stitching show up a whole lot more on a solid fabric than they do on one that has a lot of, um, lot of pattern and design going on. So maybe that will help you get over it, is know that it's probably going to be um, a little more forgiving, in my opinion. Do you think batiks make a sturdier bag? You know, batiks have, uh, I think, a much tighter weave. They have uh, been washed probably more often than a, another one. So I can definitely tell you that batiks are a little more of a challenge to sew because of that. The needle doesn't seem to go through them quite as easy uh, because it's going through that much more tight weave fabric. So I'm guessing that, yes, it would probably make a, a slightly sturdier bag. Next question, how is the thread you use for your bags different from poly thread used for machine embroidery? Let me grab another drink. So when I was working with Superior Threads doing shows, the thread that they recommended using for machine embroidery was their 40 weight thread. Um, which was um, rainbows or highlights or any of those. And it was a trilobal polyester. So this is a spun polyester thread. And the thing about a spun polyester thread is it almost looks like a cotton thread. It has a little bit of a fiber to it. Um, it's not linty, but it's, it's, and it's not as slick. So a trilobal polyester, what they do when they make a trilobal polyester is they extrude the polyester through it kind of looks like a shower head. And instead of having round holes, they're all triangular shaped. So all the little filaments that they weave together to make it have three sides. 
and each of those sides reflect light, so it makes it kind of a shiny thread. It's also more slick. The 40 weight is also heavier, so it's a heavier thread that you would use for machine embroidery so that it really fills your design and you don't have your fabric showing through. So this is a spun polyester as compared to a trivalable polyester, a finer thread and um, a little bit more of a fibery substance so it's not as slick. How do you decide what design to quilt for bag patterns? Parallel lines versus circles or squiggles when you're quilting the large two yard piece. All right, so the first thing I'll say is the vast majority of our pieces we have quilted by Linda and she does it on a long arm and she decides what to quilt. And she does an amazing job of picking designs that go with it. And if you look at some of these, you'll see that she usually tries to pick something that contrasts a little bit, I think, with the design. So on here, this had a lot of circles on it. She picked a very linear design on here. Um, on this one, she picked kind of a, a more flowing design. So I leave it up to her. I think when she has something like this that kind of reads as a solid, she'll pick a more interesting design um, than she does on something small. If I'm quilting something myself, quilting is not my forte, I do something like what we did on here because these are all ones we quilt ourselves, And I do um, straight lines or cross hatching. One thing that I can tell you is that when you are quilting uh, or when you are making a Biani bag, if you look at this bag, there is a line of stitching that goes right across here, all the way across the bag. The purpose of that line of stitching is to tell the bag, I want you to fold right here. So this line of stitching gives you a nice crisp fold here at the top. I always, um, when I do these, I prefer to quilt either in vertical lines, just maybe an inch apart, or to do something like this where, a where we're doing a cross hatching. Part of that is because we're going to do some lines of stitching here that encourage it to fold on these corners. And if I had quilted it, you know, with straight up and down lines, they, it may want to fold somewhere else. That's one of the reasons why I don't recommend horizontal lines, because that's going to make your bag fold in those places, which you might not want. Um, circles or squiggles. When we do our sewing classes upstairs, I have found that the guys in particular are really creative. And if you tell them to, to you know, quilt straight lines, their eyes kind of cross because they want to do something way more fun than that. So they'll do um, just wavy lines, you know, around. Um, Payton did a call me the other day where he did um, he did straight lines, but he did them diagonally, and he did a couple close together and one further apart. It was very modern and very exciting when it was done. So there are so many options that you can do, and in about three weeks, I think, we're going to spend our whole episode on quilting, and it's going to be quilting using your domestic machine. Later in June, I've got a friend coming who's going to talk about quilting with soft and stable on a long arm. So we'll be sharing more ideas for both of those um, in coming weeks. But hopefully those answered your questions. If not, add another comment. I always read the comments um, after we're done, and I'll try and answer more there, or we'll cover it in those episodes as well. So thank you again for joining us today. Don't forget that March is National Quilting Month. And to help us all celebrate, our friends at Shannon Fabrics have coordinated a really awesome giveaway. This year, there are three grand prizes with a combined value worth over $4,500. And it includes some Biani Soft and Stable and I think maybe some other things as well. So the giveaway runs March 1st to 31st. It's only open to makers in the continental US, but we're going to put up the link. So if you are in the continental US, uh, make sure you enter it. You can find out all the def details because you don't want to miss it. And we want to thank you all again for joining us this week. To show our thanks, we have a really fun giveaway. One lucky winner is going to receive, hang on, dropped it on the floor. So the Contain Yourself pattern, it includes instructions to make handy bins in three sizes. So a small, a medium, and a large. And the um, pattern also includes a coupon to get the add-on video at no charge. We are also including two one-yard cuts of fabric from Carrie's Happy Line and a one-yard package of Soft and Stable. So 
two um, with a, a yard of main and a yard of lining, you have enough to make the large, the medium, and two small bins. And a yard of soft and stable is enough for that too. And they're perfect for fabric, soft and stable thread, all kinds of things. Just note, soft and stable comes in black or white. So if you have a preference for your colors for this, let us know which color you prefer when we reach out to let you know that you won. And here's what you need to do to win. And remember, you need to do this on Facebook. It doesn't work on YouTube. So the first thing is leave us a comment. And that can be basically anything. Uh, maybe tell us what you learned in today's presentation. If you have any other tips to share for choosing colors for fabric, soft and stable and thread, let us know what those are. Is there a set amount of fabric that you usually buy? Do, your quilt, do you quilt your fabric on a domestic machine or on a long arm, or as I do, by check? And which by any pattern that we showed today would you like to make next? And of course, we always love hearing your ideas for patterns or other tips and tricks. The second thing that we ask you to do is tag a friend, because we really want to spread the word about our weekly live with Annie, and so please share this with someone who you think would enjoy it. And to tag someone, all you have to do is type the at symbol followed by the name that they use on Facebook. Their picture and name will pop up so you can make sure you've got the right person. If so, click on that, type in your comment, and click Submit, and that will come to us. I know, I'm really thirsty today. So we are going to pick winners from comments that are made by Midnight Mountain Time tonight. So you've got about nine more hours to watch and comment. And then finally, remember to check your Facebook messages because we will notify the winner and ask you to email your shipping address. And again, you can let um, us know then what color of soft and stable and zipper, or soft and stable that you prefer. No zippers on this, just soft and stable and fabric. Again, thank you to everyone who joined us today. We are going to be back again next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Mountain Time to share some tips for choosing the rest of supplies for your projects. So you're not going to want to miss it. And until then, happy stitching. <laughs>